Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Today Russia again went on the attack towards the Krinky village. Krinky is located just across the Dnieper river in the Kherson Oblast and it's not the first time that Russia fails with their attack attempt. It seems like that red arrow is the constant vector for them at this particular spot, so they continue to use this road to hell for them to advance towards Grinky but unsuccessfully each time. Today they lost 5 of the tanks and 4 of the infantry vehicles. But Ukraine has no tanks or BMPs deployed in Grinky. The main force to stop all of the Russian attacks towards Grinky are our marines who were deployed in the area. And also some of the drone units, including the Magyar unit. Speaking about the frontline change itself, well, there is no change, but we have some of the drone videos from the active combat. So here we go, the new Russian advancement. They used some of the tanks and BMPs on the way. Ukraine used the FPV drones. After one of the tanks was targeted, it exploded with a huge kaboom. One of the most beautiful that I saw since the beginning of the war. Yes, definitely it was the tank and I believe that the nearby armor vehicle was also touched with this huge kaboom. I'm gonna publish the full video on my Telegram channel for you to check it out. Ukraine had used at least 30 of the FPV drones to stop the Russian advancement. And more pictures about today's Russian assault and crinking. Here you can see it's already smoking, something is smoking out there. And this vehicle was also kaboomed. We are witnessing the zombie apocalypse, so then they just go with their armored vehicles and infantry forces again and again through the same roads being targeted all the time. If I was a Russian soldier, I would never go to attack because the destiny is absolutely known. The tactics for Ukraine as usual is to eliminate the vehicles and after Russian infantry landed from those, Ukraine continued to use the same tools to eliminate the Russian infantry forces while maybe using more drone drops. FPV are used also to target the infantry but more for the vehicles. The bad thing about today this Russian advancement that the fight was already happening in the Ukrainian controlled area of the Karinki village itself, so Russia was able to propel forward more than usual. Or the Ukrainian side just let Russians to go closer to their positions, trapping them. Then you don't have tanks or armored vehicles, you have to improvise. The commander of the Russian tank division of VDV forces, Colonel Arman Ospanov, lost his life. It happened on the southern part of Ukraine, I believe near Krinky also. His friends shared the information about it in the social media of the Russian Federation. So the elite Russian VDV forces lost one of their main commanders. That's interesting. I know that Russian VDV forces have significant losses, but they also continue to lose their officers. Wow. The Western media sources, as the Wall Street Journal, say that Ukraine continued to use FPV drones to compensate the lack in artillery shells, and I would agree with that. Ukraine definitely needs to have more of the FPV drones to compensate the loss, and FPV are more precise compared to artillery, even though less powerful. A positive side of artillery that even though it is less precise, but Russia is unable to enter except the shell using the electronic warfare. However, they already established a special electronic warfare to disturb the signal for the Excalibur shells and for the Hymas rocket artillery munition. They already actively use those interference devices on the front lines and we have the confirmation about it from the intelligence services. Russia is learning how to deal with the Western-made weaponry and I see that they are more and more flexible with that. Before it was really hard to implement the new technologies or new ideas in the Russia Russian army, but now they want to experiment before it was just the Ukrainian army feature. Ukraine continued to use harmers to target the Russian units behind the front lines quite successfully, as you may see. On this video, different of the Russian units were targeted quite successfully, even though Russia has a special electronic warfare against the Hymers missiles. I guess what they might disturb is the GPS signal. They are unable to cause the interference for the inertial reference system, which is also installed in those missiles. Yes, just a single inertial system will not give you that precision as combined with GPS, 
but still it is very precise weaponry. According to the other source, Russia is also performing their attacks from Verbova village, where the forces, the elite Russian forces, are used by Russia in this place. Yet they are not capable to take the ground. Here we have the statistics for the vehicle losses for the last three days. Russia lost 96 of the units, Ukraine 32. All of the front lines are included as well as many more of the vehicles including supply vehicles. In statistics you may see the Russian artillery, Russian tanks as well as Russian supply vehicles as Lada, Niva or Minivan Buhanka and even motorcycles. So Russian soldiers ride motorcycles during the winter time. As you can see it's unsafe. And Buhanka vans seems to be unsafe too. Even though Russians install some of the anti-drone tools on the top of those vans. Today again Russia launched the aerial attack on Ukraine, many of the missiles and drones at the same time. Today it was the first case that Russia used the Jet Shahid drone. Usually it is equipped with boxer two-stroke piston engine, but here the jet engine is installed, we may see it from the debris. Obviously, the jet drone is much faster compared to the standard Shahid 136, but it has much lower range, that is why it was launched from Crimea, targeting the southern part of Ukraine. But the main thing that it was shut down by the Ukrainian air defense, it's a good sign. Iran started to develop those drones just recently, so probably they are testing those in a real war scenario. And one of the Russian cruise missiles hit the ground in the Russian Federation itself. This happened in Volgograd Oblast. The attack wasn't that big as usual, but nevertheless Russia targeted some of the infrastructure in Ukraine. Serbs who fight for Russia refused to conduct the orders from the Russian army. Why is it happening? Quote, because the attitude from the Russian command towards us is like the attitude towards the dogs. They are left in their barracks without any food or heating. They are thrown to the most difficult directions. No one cares about their losses, so the attitude towards them is similar to the attitude of the Wagner towards the prisoners. And now they record the video that they don't want to continue the fight in those conditions. What is interesting that they fight under the ruling of the Russian VDV elite forces, so paratroop divisions. It is not the first time that I see the inhumane behavior from the VDV elite forces towards not just the enemy, but towards their friendly forces, in this case, Serbs. And one of the leaders of those Serbs, the pro Russian mercenary Serb himself, who also fought against Ukraine and was honored by Putin himself told to the BBC Russia that the Serb unit after that video was beaten up by the Russian VDV soldiers, they just came to the Serb barracks shooting to the ceiling and beating them up. Well, definitely it shows a nice discipline inside the Russian army and it is the great advertisement for all of the mercenaries or volunteers who would like to join the Russian army. Russian supporters suffer from the Russia itself, wow. That's great. <laughs> Some of the Russian sailors who used to serve in the big Russian military ship Novocherkask somehow are missing. Their relatives are looking for them posting the photos in internet. And today finally the Russian military start to take the DNA samples from their relatives to identify those sailors or what is left from them. A so-called leader of the so-called self-proclaimed Donetsk Republic Pushilin called for liberation, let's say, of Odessa and Mykolaiv, he called those cities as purely Russians. Again, it means that Russia is not willing to stop. So if Ukraine wants to negotiate with Russia now, Russia would ask for more territories, cities, whatever. From the current perspective, it is not acceptable. Putin sends more of the nukes to Belarus, we have the information about it from the Western media sources, they rely to the military officials of the United States and some of the officials in Europe. Obviously, it's not a good sign and what Putin wants, he wants to threaten and frighten Europe for it to drop the military support of Ukraine. Indeed, this year we don't have enough military support yet from our allies. Even German Chancellor Scholz says that the weaponry that European Union wants to send to Ukraine is not enough. Scholz says about it, it's just crazy. Meanwhile, President Biden signed the order to continue to freeze Russian population in the Moscow region. 
Well, at least that is what they think, probably, because the majority of the Russian population tend to blame America for all of their problems. Well, actually, the scale of their problem is huge. I thought that there are just few of the buildings without the heating, but no, there are several of the settlements around the Moscow city. It's crazy. Thousands of people are left without any heating. The temperature dropped to minus 27 degrees centigrade or minus 17 as far as I remember Fahrenheit. In their apartments temperature fluctuates around zero. For me it would be very interesting to check out the statistics of their voting in March elections. I know that no one would show us the real numbers but definitely Will they still support Putin or not? My friends, please don't forget to press a big like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, as always, I wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great day time.